Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Warren's Team Talk. Um, I hope that you're all well and having a great day. Anyway, thanks very much for coming to visit my channel. And I've come back today because I've got another really exciting brand new uh, video for you. And today it's episode 30 of England's most successful football club. And today I'm going to be talking to you about Sunderland. Now, um, it's another really exciting and great story, I believe. And I think you're going to really enjoy this one. Oh, anyway, it seems that the, the coach driver for the Warren's Team Talk coach is ready for us to make our trip up to the Stadium of Light in Sunderland. So let's get on our way. But before we go, I just want to remind you all that if you haven't done so already, um, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on the video. And please make sure that you like, share the show with anyone you feel might enjoy it. Um, anyway, so let's get on the road now because it's a long old journey up to Sunderland for us. So let's go. Enjoy, enjoy the on-bus entertainment. And I hope you enjoy the trip and my show. And um, yeah, let's get on with it. And so we've arrived here in Sunderland and we pulled up outside the um, Stadium of Light in, in Sunderland here. And we've come to visit our friends here and find out all about this wonderful football club, Sunderland. And what we've, what we've been told so far is that they came 11th in the Warren's Team Talk table and they managed to get 4,615 points. Now, the club, um, Sunderland, or Sunderland Association Football Club, to give them their proper name, um, are also known as the Black Cats, were formed in 1879 by schoolmaster James Allen. And they started life, sun, they started life as Sunderland District, Sunderland and District Teachers AFC. The club also known are also known as the Mackhams, which is an informal nickname for residents of and um, people from um, the Sunderland area, and also the name for the local accent and a name for their supporters as well. So now whatever that what whatever no matter what their origin is so i remember years ago um i used to have a friend of mine um who studied there at university and john no i'm not talking about you um this guy he was a big arsenal fan and he used to go to me with to with me to a lot of the games and whenever he spoke about Sunderland, he used to talk to them about me about them in glowing terms and just we used to refer to them as the Mackhams. But anyway, it seems more likely, um, it seems more likely that the club was formed on the 25th of September, 1880, and it was renamed as Sunderland AFC and became open to more than just uh, school teachers in October, 1880. Sunderland then joined the Football League for the start of the 1890-91 season when they replaced Stoke, who had failed to be re-elected, and they became the first new club to join the league since its inauguration in 1888. Now, during the late 19th century, they were declared the team of all talents by William McGregor, who was the founder of the league after a 7-2 win against Aston Villa. Now, Sunderland play their home games at the 49,000 capacity all-seater stadium of light um, when they moved from Roker Park into this ground in 1997. And the original capacity, the original ground's capacity was 42,000 which was increased to 49,000 following expansion in the year 2000. Now, Sunderland's first success came in the 1891-92 season 
when they won the Football League, finishing five points clear of Preston North End, who finished second. And Sunderland that season also scored a massive 93 goals in 26 league games, which when you work it out is roughly just over three and a half goals a game. Sunderland then followed up this league title success up in the 1892-93 season by winning the newly created First Division Tier 1, as this was the year that the English Football League um, introduced a second division and so the Football League was restructured to become the First Division Tier 1 and Second Division Tier 2. They then won the First Division Tier 1 by finishing ahead of Preston North End by nine points on this occasion and this time they managed to score 100 league goals in 30 games. Then the very next year, in the 1893-94 season, Sunderland finished six points behind league champions Aston Villa to finish as runners-up in the First Division Tier 1. The following season, in 1894-1895, Sunderland regained their first League 1 Tier League, their First Division Tier 1 League title, after finishing second the year before, when they finished five points ahead of second placed Everton. Following on from this, three years later in the 1897-98 season, Sunderland secured a second place finish in the first division tier one by finishing five points behind the league champions that year, Sheffield United after another two years in 1899-1900 season, Sunderland finished third in the first division tier one, nine, one, nine points behind the season's league champions, Aston Villa, and seven points behind second place Sheffield United. And then following on from that, the very next year in the 1900-1901 season, the club improved on their finishing uh, position by one point, one point from the previous position by one position when they finished second to Liverpool by two points in the first division tier one. And then in the 1901-1902 season, Sunderland repeated the trick from the year before of improving on their finishing position by one place from the previous year before when they went on to win the first division tier one and finish when they finished three points ahead of second place Everton. The following season in 1902-1903, Sunderland slipped to third when they finished narrowly behind the champions that year, the Wednesday, who, as I think I've mentioned before, went on in late years to be known as Sheffield Wednesday. Um, and they finished one point behind them, and they also finished behind second place Aston Villa on goal leverage by 0 0.108 of a goal. After this, the next time that the club would enjoy any success would be in the 1908-1909 season when they secured a third place finish in the first division tier one by finishing nine points behind local time and weir rivals newcastle united who were the first division tier one champions that year and they also finished two points behind second place everton other after further two years in the 1910-11 season the mackhams also finished third in the first division tier one seven points behind the league champions that year, Manchester United, and six points behind the first division tier one champions, sorry, division one runners up that season, Aston Villa. <clears throat> now, moving on. 
Two years later, in the 1912-13 season, the Black Cats won their first First Division Tier 1 title in 11 years when they finished four points ahead of Aston Villa, um, who obviously finished second. Um, and this season also saw the club reach its first ever FA Cup final. However, sadly for the Black Cats, the club lost 1-0 to Aston Villa at the Crystal Palace Stadium in front of a crowd of what is reported to have been in excess of 120,000 people. This final also went down in history because it was the first time that the top two teams in English football had clashed in the final for what was regarded at the time as the world's premier domestic knockout tournament and also because at the time the game was attended by a world record crowd. Now, for those of you interested, I, in the description of this video, I put a link to a, a YouTube video which shows some footage from that cup final, which I found quite interesting because it shows um, the cup final being played at the Crystal Palace Stadium. Um, and you can quite easily see like the, the thousands and thousands of people attending the match. So it's quite interesting to have a look at that. So this was the last success though that uh, Sunderland enjoyed before the outbreak of World War One. And then Sunderland's next success though came in the 1922. 23 season when they finished second in the first division tier one sorry second in the first division tier one they fin when they finished one point ahead a third place Huddersfield Town and six points behind league champions that year Liverpool um, the following season in the 1923-24 season the Black Cats finished four points behind second place Cardiff City and champions Huddersfield Town, who both finished the season on 57 points and had to be separated on goal average, which was just a mere 0.024 um, of a goal. So you can see that the margin of difference between the two of them was incredibly slim. So Sutherland that year also scored 70 league, 71 league goals, um, which was the highest number of goals scored in the league and also at least 10 league goals more than their nearest competitors. And But on the other hand, though, they conceded nearly 20 goals more than their nearest competitors at the top end of the table. Two years later, starting in the 1925-26 season, Sutherland finished third in the First Division Tier 1 in two successive seasons. Firstly, in the 1925-26 season, they finished nine points behind the league champions Huddersfield Town. And then in the 1926-27 season, they finished seven points behind the league champions and their bitter rivals, Newcastle United. Then two years later, in the 1928-29 season, Sunderland went on to secure a fourth place finish in the first division tier one in a season which saw their striker Dave Halliday score a massive 43 league goals which made him the first the first division's leading goal scorer that season. Now six years after this in the 1934-35 season the Black Cats secured a second place finish in the first division tier one when they finished four points behind the league champions that year, Arsenal. Now, the, the next year in the 1935-36 season, Sunderland followed up on this second place finish by going one better and winning the first division tier one title with an eight point winning margin over second place Derby County. And this season also saw Sunderland score a massive 109 goals, but they also scored 
uh, conceding an unbelievable 74 goals. But despite this, they still managed to win, win the league title fairly comfortably. Now, the following season in 1936-37, Sunderland won the FA Charity Shield by defeating the Arsenal 2-1 at their Roker Park Stadium um, in Sunderland. The game attracted a crowd of just over 15,000 people. Also this season saw Sunderland make their first appearance at Wembley Stadium when they reached the 1937 FA Cup final. And their journey to the FA Cup final that season took in the following opponents. They went to Southampton away in the third round and won 3-2. And then in the fourth round, they defeated Luton Town after a replay, 3-1. And then in the fifth round, they defeated Swansea City 3-0 at home. In the sixth round, they defeated Wolverhampton Wanderers again, but this time after two replays. And the final uh, score in the last replay was four goals to nil. In the semi-final, they came up against Millwall at um, Huddersfield's Lead Road Stadium and won by two goals to one. And then in the final itself, Sunderland uh, defeated Preston North End by three goals to one at Wembley Stadium with a crowd of 93,495 in attendance, which meant that Sunderland obviously took the trophy back up to the North East. And in the following season, in 1937-38, the Black Cats once again competed for the FA Charity Shield but on this occasion, they, for them, they sadly lost 2-0 to Manchester City at Man City's Main Road Stadium in front of a crowd of 14,000 people. Now, in the fourth season after World War II in 1949-50, Sunderland finished third in the First Division Tier 1 when they finished the season on 52 points which was one point behind the league champions that year, Portsmouth, and runners-up Wolverhampton Wanderers, Wanderers, who both finished the season on 53 points and were separated using goal average, which was just 0.396 of a goal. The Black Cats were the highest league goal scorers, though, that season. And then five years later, in the 1954-55 season, the club finished fourth in the first division tier one when they finished four points behind league champions Chelsea that season. But equal on points for the second and third place teams, which were who were Wolverhampton Wanderers and Portsmouth. And all these clubs had to be separated on goal average. And the difference between the second place team um, Sunderland, Portsmouth and Sunderland that season was a mere 0.086 of a goal. After this, Sunderland's stay in the First Division Tier 1 would only last for another three years until the 1957-58 season when they unfortunately suffered relegation to the Second Division Tier 2. And then starting in the 1961-62 season, the Black Cats secured two successive third-place finishes. The first one in the 1961-62 season, when they finished nine points behind the second division champions. And then they missed out on promotion when they finished one point behind second place Leighton Orient who occupied the final promotion spot that season. The next season, in 1962-63, the 
they finished one point behind the second division champions that year, Stoke City, and they missed out on promotion when they finished equal on points with second place Chelsea, but had an inferior goal average to, to the Londoners by 0 .4, 0 0.402 of a goal. Then Sunderland then followed up this these two third place finishes by finishing second in the second division tier two when they finished two points behind the season's second division champions Leeds United and one promotion back to the first division tier one. The length the club then stayed in the first division until the 1969-70 season when they were relegated back to the second division tier two. Then in the 1972-73 season, the Black Cats reached the FA Cup final for the third time. And on this occasion, they faced an extremely strong Leeds United team who were regularly competing for and winning all the domestic honours available, as well as performing strongly in European competition. And so was seen as, Sunderland was therefore seen as firm underdogs for the trophy that year. Sunderland's journey to the final for this cup final for, included the following, um, the stops on the way. Not in the third round, they played Notts County, and um, defeated um, the Nottinghamshire side 2 0 after a replay. And in the fourth round, um, in the fourth round, they, defe they defeated Reading 3 1 after a replay. And then in the fifth round, they defeated Manchester City. 3-1 after again after a replay and then they defeated 2-0 Luton Town 2-0 in the sixth round and then Arsenal 2-1 in the semi-final. Now in the final itself Sunderland caused one of the greatest hit upsets in the history of the FA Cup. Um, when they defeated Leeds United 1-0 at Wembley Stadium, thanks to a goal from Ian Porterfield in the 31st minute in front of a capacity 100,000 crowd. Now here, if we look at this, this is the Sunderland players celebrating um, with, their, with the FA Cup, which they won in the 1973 final. And then on the back of this uh, cup final victory, uh, Sunderland qualified for the European Cup Winners Cup. And their campaign lasted until the second round that season in 1973-74, when they lost 3-2 on aggregate to the Portuguese side sport in Lisbon. And then in the 1974-75 season, Sunderland missed out on promotion back to the first division tier one by two points when they fourth finished fourth in the second division tier two, ten points behind the second division tier two champions, Manchester United, seven points behind second place Aston Villa, and two points behind third place Norwich City, who occupied the final promotion place. The next season in 1975-76, Sunderland made up for the disappointment of the previous season when they won the second division tier two title with a three point margin of victory over second place Bristol City and third place um, West Bromwich Albion who both finished the season on 53 points. Now, moving, moving on, um, unfortunately for the Black Cats, 
the very next year they were relegated back to the second division tier two in the 1976-77 season and in Sunderland's first season back in the second division tier two in the 1978-77 season uh, the Black Cats The Black Cats missed out on promotion by a solitary goal when they finished equal on points with third place Stoke City, who occupied the final promotion spot that season. Now, happily though for Sunderland, they were able to make up for the disappointment of missing out on promotion the season before when they when they finished second in the second division tier two to win back promotion to the first division tier one that season and also saw them finish one point behind that that season second division champions leicester city and one point ahead of third place birmingham city and fourth place chelsea sunderland then stayed in the first division tier one for a period of five years until the 1984-85 season when they were relegated back to the second division tier two. This season also saw Sunderland return to Wembley Stadium for the League Cup final when unfortunately for the Black Cats they won, lost 1-0 to Norwich City in front of a capacity 100,000 crowd in a game where Sunderland, def Sunderland defender Gordon Chisholm unfortunately scored an own goal, which meant that Norwich were able to take the League Cup back to East Anglia. Now, two years later in the 1986-87 season, Sunderland suffered another relegation when they lost to Gillingham in the playoff semi-finals, when they lost on the away goals rule after the tie in and ended in a 6-6 draw. This defeat meant that Sunderland, for the first time in their history, were relegated to the third division tier, two, tier three. Right, hold on just a second for me, please. Well, I sort that phone out because I don't want any more interruptions like that. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, so moving on. In their first season in the third division, tier three, Sunderland comfortably won the third division title with a point gap of nine, nine points to second place Brighton and Hove Albion and in this season Sunderland also scored a massive 92 league goals in 46 league games. The next highest league goal scorers were scored 82 goals that season. Then two years later in 1989, the 1989-90 season Sunderland initially narrowly missed out on promotion to the first division tier one when after securing a sixth place finish in the second division tier two they lost one nil to Swindon Town in the playoff final however after Swindon Town won promotion their promotion was overturned due to the fact that they allegedly had made some illegal payments during that season. And so therefore, as a, as a consequence, Sunderland were um, promoted instead. The following season in the 1990-91 season, Sunderland were relegated back to the second division tier two. Um, and then the next season in 1991-92, Sunderland again reached the FA Cup final as a second division club. Um, 
as they had as just as they had done in their last appearance in the FA Cup final in 1973. However, on this occasion, there would be no repeat of their heroics from the 1973 Cup final, as on this occasion they lost 2-0 to, uh, to Liverpool at Wembley Stadium in front of a crowd of just over 79,000 people. Then four years after their FA Cup final um, defeat to Liverpool, Sunderland made up for this disappointment somewhat by winning promotion back to the first tier of English football in the 1995-96 season by winning the first division tier two title with a four-point marg winning margin over second place Derby County. Sunderland were then relegated back to the first division tier two in the first season in their first season in the FA Premier League tier one in the 1996-97 season and then the next season in 1997-98 Sunderland failed to win promotion back to the FA Premier League tier one when they finished third in the first division tier two one point behind northeast um rivals newcastle united who grabbed the final promotion spot and as a as a consequence sunderland went into the playoff promotion playoff tournament um but unfortunately they lost in the playoff Final 7-6 on penalties to Charlton Athletic after the game had ended in a 4 all draw. And then the following season in 1998-99, Sunderland won the first division tier one title at Acanta, amassing an incredible 105 points, which was a huge 18 points clear of second place Bradford City. And this title win meant they won promotion back up to the Premier League Tier 1. And after spending four years in the FA Premier League, Sunderland were then relegated back to the First Division Tier 1 in the 2003-2004 season. And Sunderland secured a third place finish in the First Division um, Tier 1 when they finished 15 points behind First Division Tier 2 champions that season, Norwich City, and also seven points behind second place West Bromwich Albion, who occupied the final automatic promotion spot. Sunderland went, then went on to lose 5-4 to Crystal Palace on penalties in the playoff semi-final after the tie end, had ended 4-4 on aggregate. Then the next season in 2004-2005, Sunderland won the Football League Championship Tier 2 title to win promotion back up to the FA Premier League Tier 1 when they finished seven points ahead of runners-up Wigan Athletic. However, unfortunately for the Black Cats, their stay in the Premier League only lasted one season when they were relegated straight back to the Football League Championship Tier 2. And then in the 2006-2007 season, Sunderland again won the Football League Championship Tier 2 title to win the automatic promotion back up to the FA Premier League Tier 1, although their title win was not as emphatic as it had been two years previously, they still managed to win the title with a two-point winning margin over second place Birmingham City. Seven years after this, in the 2013-14 season, 
Sunderland again returned to Wembley Stadium for the Football League Cup final, but again, sadly for the Black Cats, on this occasion, they lost 3-1 to Manchester City in a game which attracted a crowd of just under 85,000. And then after this League Cup final defeat to Manchester City, the next time that Sunderland would achieve any success would come in the 2018-19 season when they were unfortunately to run us up to Portsmouth in the AFL Trophy Final played at Wembley Stadium in front of a crowd of just over 85,000. The game ended in a two-all draw after extra time, which meant that the went, match went to a penalty shootout, which Sunderland unfortunately lost 5-4 on penalties. Um, I just at this stage just like to point out as well, Sunderland did win um, earlier this season. Sunderland did win the EFL Trophy when they defeated Tranmere Rovers 1-0 at Wembley Stadium. However, unfortunately, I'm not able to include their victory in this series at present because the data that I used to work out the standing uh, in my Warren's Team Talk table only included results up to and including the 2019-20 season. So to be fair to all the other clubs that have appeared in this series, I've decided not to include that um, in this table. But however, at the end of the series, I will publish an end of series final standings table table um, with all the data that was used in this series and also a table including all the data up into and including the end of this current season. So anyway, I found this Sunderland All-Time 11 on a website, website called Chronicle Live, which seems to be a local news website from the northeast of England, and the team seems to be submitted by someone called Stephen Brown. And Steve Brown's um, team, he for me seems quite an interesting one. Um, he set his team up in a three-four-three formation, and he claims that his team is ridiculously talented yet doomed to failure. <laughs> which I have to say is a bit harsh, but I do tend to agree with him. His team, um, if we look at it, as his follows. In goal, a guy by the name of Jim Montgomery. He had a three-man defence of Dave Watson, Colin Todd and Charlie Hurley. And then in midfield, he went um, for Kevin Ball as a defensive midfielder. Julia Arker, and Dennis Stewart and Len Shackleton as an attacking midfielder. And then he had three forward, a uh, three-man forward line of Kevin Phillips, Niall Quinn, and the infamous Brian Clough. So if you have any other all-time Sunderland 11s, please, 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 can you put them in the description of this video? Uh, sorry, in the comments section of the video. Again, I'd be delighted to see your all-time 11s for this great club. And um, if you've got any comments about uh, Steve Brown's 11, please put that in there as well. And Or if you've got any interesting stories about Sunderland or comments about them, I'd be delighted to read that too. Anyway, in the description of this video, you will also find the two um, find links to two YouTube videos that I found, um, which I think are quite interesting. One is for a video of about 12 minutes, which shows highlights of Sunderland's famous 1973 FA Cup final victory, which appears on a channel called the Oldie Football Channel. And 
The second one is also for a YouTube channel showing footage of the 1913 FA Cup final played at the Crystal Palace Stadium in front of a, hundred, a crowd of over 120,000 people. And that channel is called Villa Boy. Um, obviously, it's um, a game which Aston Villa won by one goal to nil. But it is really interesting to see the footage and it is quite clear and quite good. So I was quite impressed, really. But it's definitely worth having a look at. Well, it is, in my opinion, anyway. Well, sadly, everyone, that's it. That's the end of today's show. I hope that you enjoyed it and you found it interesting. Um, I certainly really enjoyed researching it all for you and putting it together. So I'm, I really hope you did enjoy it. Anyway, as I said in the video, please, if you have any greatest ever Sunderland teams, put, please put it in the comment section of this video, um, as well as any other comments that you might have or stories that you might have about Sunderland Football Club. That would be amazing. I really enjoy reading them. So anyway, that I could say that's it for today. But um, please, before you go, um, if you haven't done so already, please can I ask you to uh, put a like on the video and if you haven't subscribed already to my channel, please do that by clicking on the button in the bottom, yeah, on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, I think it is. Um, anyway, this is the big red subscribe button. You may, th um, anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed it and remember it's all completely free and hopefully it will have it's helped keep you entertained. Um, anyway, I'll be back again on Saturday with the next episode for you in this series. Um, but more importantly than any of that, any of that stuff, please, please look after yourselves. And remember, please share some love around the world and kindness and joy and happiness. And please, please, please keep remember to keep talking. All right. Anyway, guys, take care of yourselves and thanks for watching. I love you all and please take care and I'll speak to you again soon. Take care now. Bye.